p.m. to 7 p.m. Coming up here on Mountain News at 5.30, America's Golden Girl has died just weeks before her 100th birthday. We'll take a look back at the life and career of Betty White. And more than 600 homes have burned so far as the Rocky Mountain State grapples with devastating wildfires. The first our severe weather alert day continues as we watch heavy rain and strong storms work into the mountains for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. I'll have the very latest coming up right now at 5.30. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Well, good Friday evening to you. I'm Dakota Makris, and Happy New Year's Eve to you. Well, it is the calm before the storm today as severe weather makes its way to our region tonight and into tomorrow. We have declared a severe weather alert day to help you prepare Let's check in with meteorologist Evan Hatter. Evan. That's right, Dakota. We are in a severe weather alert day. We're continuing to watch the development of showers and storms out to our west. Not just one round, but as many as three rounds of showers and storms that could be on the strong to severe side as we head into our New Year's Day. Outside right now, we're in okay shape. I-75 at Mount Vernon, overcast, a little bit of sogginess on the roadway, but otherwise we're actually in good shape. Downtown Whitesburg, you can see some of the uh, uh, some of the sogginess there on uh, Main Street there in downtown Whitesburg. They currently sit at a balmy, at least for late December standards, 58 degrees. That's where most of us are right now. The further south and west you go, though, the warmer it is. Look at Monticello at 66. We're watching a bit of a warm frontal boundary begin to work on through the area. We had a few showers across portions of places like uh, Morgan and Wolf County not too long ago, but look out to the south and west. That's the next system headed our way. We have a flood watch in effect throughout the night tonight and into our New Year's Day. We also have the threat for severe thunderstorms as well. So go ahead and download that WYMT weather app. You can scan that code in the top right hand portion of your TV screen. And that will let you download the app for iOS and for Android. You'll get the latest radar imagery. And of course, like you see on the screen right now, our latest forecast. And if an alert comes out for your area, you'll get it immediately in the palm of your hand. I'll have the latest on when we could see those storms move in. Timing everything out coming up in just a few minutes. Dakota. All right, Evan, thank you so much. Well, her decades-long career ranged from model to host to actress. Betty White died at the age of 99, just weeks shy of her 100th birthday, leaving fans saddened, but with fond memories and gratefulness for the laughter she brought so many for so long. Nikki Batiste takes a look back at the career of America's Golden Girl. Hi, Sue Ann, how are you? I didn't sleep a wink all night. I feel wonderful. Before she became a household name on the Mary Tyler Moore Show, Betty White was a familiar face on TV, hosting parades, appearing in TV commercials. Your man's Valentine is sportsman toiletries. Your gals. And as a regular on game shows, from To Tell the Truth to The Match Game. I'm the first one finished. You're the best. You were finished a long time ago, sweetheart. <laughs> to her favorite. Well, here's your host on Password, Alan Ludden. But the role of man-crazy happy homemaker Sue Ann Nivens on the top-rated Mary Tyler Moore show made her a star. It became her trademark, a sweet little lady who says not-so-sweet things. Sue Ann. Yes, Lou. Could, could you do me a favor? Well, maybe on my lunch hour. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being a friend. In 1985, White took on a new role, playing the lovable, naive Rose on The Golden Girls. Even a trip to the bank can be exciting if you wear a ski mask. <laughs> Considered one of the most progressive TV shows of all time, the four older single women living as housemates in Miami raked in awards and maintained a cult status for decades. Who's that at the door? It's me, Blanche. As White got older, her popularity actually increased. You're playing like Betty White out there. That's not what your girlfriend said. The 2010 Super Bowl ad for Snickers was such a hit that it started a Facebook campaign for her to host Saturday Night Live. Betty White. A few months later, she got the gig. We love you. The appearance earned her a seventh Emmy Award. That same year, she also starred in yet another sitcom at age 88. Try them on, Joy. You're the only one here with man hands. And at age 96. Oh, my goodness. 
White received a rousing standing ovation at the 70th Emmy Awards. She thanked her fans and said it was incredible that she could stay in a career so long and still have people put up with her. Nikki Batiste, CBS News. Mm, I think all we can say is thank you for being a friend, Betty. Well, daylight has revealed the scope of devastation in Boulder County, Colorado, after historic wildfires wiped out entire neighborhoods in a matter of hours. The wind whipped flames destroyed hundreds of buildings and drove tens of thousands from their homes. People had only minutes to escape with whatever they could grab. Many returned to their homes this morning to learn they had lost everything. I would estimate it's going to be at least 500 homes. I would not be surprised if it's a thousand. Well, the fast moving wildfires fueled by 105 mile per hour winds left a wide path of destruction. How the fire started is still under investigation, but the sheriff suggested down power lines may be the cause. Colorado's governor has declared a state of emergency, freeing up emergency funds and resources for those impacted. Well, the COVID spike from Omicron continues with nearly half a million new cases in the U.S. on Thursday alone. Some governors are enacting new mandates for the new year, as states are also trying to stay ahead of testing shortages. New York's governor is extending the state's mask mandate to February, while Connecticut has brought in hundreds of thousands of rapid tests and, well, though, and wanting those in need to get first priority. Sending it out to the municipalities with our guidance that focus on the vulnerable, focus on the forward-facing folks, focus on people that um, are showing symptoms. Additionally, the CDC is recommending all Americans avoid traveling on cruise ships, warning that the risk of catching COVID-19 is very high. The agency is currently investigating outbreaks that occurred on several dozen ships. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic could come to an end in 2020 if global vaccination increases. Now, that's according to the World Health Organization. WHO's chief said in a statement today that the world has all the tools and resources to end what they, he calls a calamity. Now, he added that, quote, if the right choices are taken, we can turn this pandemic around. Among the 2021 achievements, WHO Director General listed the COVID-19 shots administered worldwide 8.5 billion. According to the WHO, projections show there is a potential to vaccinate all adults globally and provide boosters to high risk groups. Well, and starting today, the travel ban on Africa is no more. The restrictions were put in last month, keeping people from eight Southern African nations from traveling here. Now, the decision was made as the Omicron variant began to spread, but received harsh criticism. The Biden administration defended the choice, saying the U.S. needed more time to understand the variant and its spread. But CDC officials have since recommended lifting the restrictions because of data showing our vaccines are effective against Omicron. Well, it's typically the biggest party of the year. Tens of thousands are crammed into Times Square to watch the ball drop and ring in the new year. Surging COVID cases reduced that guest list to a socially distanced 15,000 spectators. Courtney Keeley is in Times Square where spirits are up in spite of it all. Revelers are gathering at the crossroads of the world, ready to bid 2021 goodbye. We're trying to begin our year as best as we can. But we're looking back saying, look how we celebrated going into 2022. The NYPD spent the wee hours putting barriers in place to accommodate the limited crowd of 15,000. Spectators go through a multi-layered security screening process in order to see the six-ton crystal encrusted ball drop. But this year, officials are also checking vaccination status, and everyone must wear a mask. Most importantly, we want people to be safe and healthy. The U.S. is breaking records for new COVID cases, almost a half million reported on Thursday. Revelers here say they feel safe with the extra precautions in place. I think uh, New York is doing a good yeah. uh, job with scaling it down, but still keeping life as usual as much as we can. COVID worries are adding to the ever-present security concerns here. A lot of the police officers here are working overtime because at least 20% of the police force is out sick due to the coronavirus. Rooftops on the Vegas Strip are prepping for the fireworks show there. And Chicago is going forward with what it calls the largest fireworks display in Windy City history, spread out over a mile and a half stretch of downtown. The mayor is urging residents to make their own best choices. In many instances, that's going to be, you know what, I'm good. I'm going to stay home. I'm going to watch it all uh, from my TV. Back in Times Square, the mass countdown to midnight is on. Everyone's hoping for a good year and a little bit of a change from these 
past couple years. Looking for a brighter and better new year. Courtney Keeley, CBS News, Times Square. Well, and across the globe, many are fearing a sense of deja vu in 2022. Increasing COVID cases, meaning lackluster celebrations in 2021, much like 2020, a lack of New Year's fun. In New Zealand, car horns and sirens replaced the fireworks display. While in China, Xi'an is on lockdown due to an outbreak. But while COVID continues to be a source of schism, the fear of yesteryear seems to be replaced by new optimism. I'm not at all worried. We have lots of vaccines. I'm confident that we'll get over this and everything will be okay. Now, while COVID canceled festivities across many European nations, Britain's Big Ben helped bring in London's celebrations. Well, did you miss all of the super moons and meteor showers this year? Well, don't worry. 2022's got you covered. There are plenty of celestial events to look forward to in the new year. Two of 2022's 12 full moons will be super moons those in June and July. There will also be two total lunar eclipses. The two solar eclipses will only be partial. As for shooting stars, there are plenty of meteor showers to look forward to starting in April. Well, coming up here on Mountain News, heading into the 2022 midterm elections, will women be the key to the GOP winning back control in Congress? We'll take a look at one Congresswoman's recruiting efforts. And the potential for heavy rain and strong storms look to increase as soon as later tonight. We'll have the very latest on our severe weather alert day coming up. Help save a life with the Kentucky Blood Center Blood Drive at WYMT, January 3rd 